I'm presently working on my PhD. I'm based at uh, York University in Toronto, Canada, and I'm a senior research associate at the Augmented Reality Lab we have there. And I've been uh, working with AR over the past six years. I also consult, so I'm working in the commercial industry, and I'm also an artist by training. I'm really interested in AR as a new visual medium for creative people. And I think as we advance the technology, it's really important for these three spheres to come together if we really are going to move forward and expand AR as a medium and to keep the, the lines of communication open between these three spheres. Last October, I was really flattered I was invited to give a TEDx talk, and I talked about augmented reality and wonderment and how it guides my creative process. Um, you can see that online. I'm, I'm not going to repeat my talk, so you'll have new compelling content today, hopefully. And um, part of that talk, I, I spoke to my mixed reality and augmented reality installations at the Ontario Science Centre in Toronto, Canada. And I touched upon compelling content. And we're at a point right now with augmented reality. Oh, here comes Ryan, my doppelganger. You missed your slide. Say hi, Ryan, everybody. Hi, hi Ryan. I'm on a double. <laughs> um, so we're at a point right now with augmented reality that's really important to embrace and develop compelling content. Content needs to catch up to the technology. And hopefully I'll, um, I'll, I'll suggest some, some ways of doing that. Some of my inspirations. Uh, Georges Méliès, some may be familiar to some of you in the room, French filmmaker, was first a magician, um, really brought a sense of wonder and fantasy to, to cinema. I often compare augmented reality to cinema when it was first new, when there were as yet no conventions. And with cinema, initially, it was very much about um, the, the technology as opposed to story or content or narrative. That all came a lot later. And so I, I think we're at a similar position right now with augmented reality, where we're really um, focusing on the technology, but what we really do need to do is, is bring content up there, storytelling and narrative. So Georges Méliès, he's, he's known as the father of special effects. He's quite famous for the stop trick, which then led to double exposure and split screen and dissolves. And this all actually came about by accident. So the story goes that he, his film, uh, his camera jammed up, and he later looked at the film, and all of a sudden there was a horse carriage that transformed into a hearse. And so he used this technique to, to grow story and to evolve different narratives from that visual technique. John Andrew Burden Jr., who's a film theorist, he says, Melia did not stop with a concentration on technical achievement, but he was busy finding ways to use his technique to carry substantial content. And I think that's really important as we advance augmented reality. Oh, I see a magician in the audience here, so we'll be seeing some augmented reality magic later today, I hope. Even though Melia's work was closely involved with the state of the art, he did not let that aspect of his work rule the overall piece. He used his technique to augment his artistic sense, not to create it. So Melia introduced new formal styles and new conventions and techniques that were specific to the medium of film. And this is really important that we look at what is specific to augmented reality as medium. What will those new conventions be in AR? How is AR different from film and other previous media? What new forms does AR make possible? So it's really important to consider these questions as the medium moves forward and we generate new forms in AR, new forms of storytelling and new forms of narrative. I wanted to briefly touch on Marshall McLuhan, who's maybe familiar to some of you, a media theorist from Toronto, Canadian. And um, he developed something called the Tetrad, where there are four different aspects on how society impacts culture and society. And I wanted to go through these very quickly. Enhances, obsolesces, retrieves, and reverses. And I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd take that and apply that to augmented reality. So in terms of enhances, what aspect of society or human life does, does augmented reality enhance or amplify? Well, information sharing, entertainment, gaming, education, human vision. What does it eclipse or push aside? Does it obsolesce? Virtual reality, virtual intangible environments. What does augmented reality retrieve? So what does it pull back from center stage, from the shadows of obsolescence? What well, brings back tactility, physical engagement, mobility in physical space, and the single user looking device? So I think back to um, early Victorian media and the stereoscope. And I also think of the panorama and dioramas of being able to move through a space physically, engaging the body, and being able to see the work in that way. And the last one reverses. So this is looking way into the future. 
What does the medium reverse or flip into when it's run its course or been developed to its fullest potential? And for me, I think that's the window and the screen, a mediated reality where we have no screen or no identifiable, no identifiable filter. I, I think of retina projections and no longer being able to distinguish reality from the virtual. Thinking of Jean Baudrillard and the hyperreal. Um, we can also think of an advanced sensory technologies where we now have the brain linked to the digital realm, so a direct interfacing of the brain with the world. So what does that all mean? Well, I think it's important, again, to look at what the specifics of AR are. So what are the unique characteristics of, of augmented reality? This is my list, and I'm sure you have your own. So for me, it's about potential, potentialities that top actualities, about making visible the invisible. The reverse also applies. Context-specific, physical environment, space and place, and how they're central to the experience. It's time-based, interactive, and over the, the past um, couple of days of the conference, we've heard the word exclusive come up a lot, which is, is something interesting, I think, to embrace. So how can we then harness these unique aspects and evolve story and narrative that, that comes from these specific characteristics of augmented reality? I thought I'd um, briefly talk a little bit about my own work. You can see it online, um, but so I've worked with AR for the past six years, and I started working with fiducial markers, and then I moved on to natural feature tracking, and I've also been really interested in disguising markers as objects, as opposed to um, fiducials kind of interrupting the visual design or aesthetic of piece. This was a piece that I did for, um, for Ismar last year, and this is the Ismar logo. When you hold up your mobile phone, this is actually a physical mobile, something like Alexander Calder. It's, it's a sculpture, and it's hanging from the ceiling. And when you look through it, you see this a butterfly perch, a perch that appears, which is uh, part of the theme last year. So you can see looking up into it. And there's a bit of anamorphosis happening, where depending on the angle you're standing at, you can see um, you know, different shapes and, uh, and eventually the augmented reality content. So I, I'm interested in this idea of, when it comes to narrative and storytelling, of standalone objects, but then being enhanced with another layer of content. So being able to enjoy these objects alone as art, or having them supplemented in some way. Okay, this is where I'm going to be brave. I'm going to attempt a live demo, so bear with me. And I mentioned I've been working with, um, well, I started working with fiducial markers, and now I'm really excited to be able to branch out and um, create, um, create books that can be enjoyed as books alone without the visual intrusion of, of black and white square markers, but being able to add um, another layer of content to top. Okay, we switched to iPad now. So I was working with um, with Junaio on the iPad 2. Eventually we'll get there. Right. Okay. <coughs> so, so I created a book. It's called Who's Afraid of Bugs? An augmented reality pop-up book. And it goes you go through the book and there are different elements of paper engineering in it. And the, the book was actually inspired, the content's still loading here, Wi-Fi connection, not so good. Um, and the, the book was actually inspired by some uh, psychotherapy studies in augmented reality around arachnophobia and being able to create a safe environment for test patients where these virtual bugs would appear in their space. And so I've gone through and I've created a book where different bugs appear. So in a way, this is a little bit of an exposure therapy, playing around with, uh, with narrative. Oh, why find Silicon Valley? Why are you not good to me? You might have to initialize it in a browser. Again? Yeah, I did that earlier. Let's try that again. Good idea. I want to be connected again.
All right, okay. So, we go through the book, and they're different. Elements. I don't have a sexy gun like Bruce Sterling was talking about for my iPod. And you go through, and the spider appears and grabs hold of my fears. And you can actually put your hand in and have the spider crawl atop. I don't know if anyone's afraid of spiders, but we can explore that. And the spider attacks. And then we can go through the book, and uh, this one's we've got some ants to pick next. They're here on the public table here. I lost your video. Your video. Oh, I lost my video? Oh, you don't like to lose me? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> See, I told you I told you I was brave by doing a letdown. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so as, as you go through the book, there are different you know, physical paper engineering elements that, that you will go through and explore, and then the augmented reality content will appear top. So I've done a couple of other pop-up books in the past, but they were all with traditional markers. And so this was fun for me to be able to just explore something visually and enjoy it alone as a book. Are we back yet? No. Private showing, you can um, you can explore it yourself. And how about can I go back to my um, my Mac? Yeah, all right. Well, I wrote myself an hour and said, don't forget about Sammy Jenkins. But it was essentially, don't forget about Golan Levin. Um, Golan wrote an excellent post a couple years ago, and he updated it recently with, uh, with a piece by Chris O'Shea that Forever 21 had replicated in New York City. And um, Golan's whole point was that it's really critical to involve artists early on as a new technology is, is emerging and, and growing. And he says, um, it's important to include artists in the DNA of any serious technology. Um, and he mentions different research labs like Xerox Park, MIT Media Lab, Atari Research Lab. And the important point is that he said the artist posed no novel questions which wouldn't have arisen otherwise. He says, I increasingly find myself pointing out how some of today's most commonplace and widely appreciated technologies were initially conceived and prototyped years ago by new media artists. In some instances, we can pick out the unmistakable signature of a single person's original artistic idea, released into the world decades ahead of its time, perhaps even dismissed in its day as useless or impractical, which after complex chains of influence and reinterpretation has become absorbed generations of computers later into the culture as an everyday product. So it's a really important time for artists to be involved in this technology as it grows forward and we need artists and visual people and filmmakers and authors and all sorts of uh, creative types and, and content producers to really drive this technology forward. So I've come back to my diagram again. And you know, today I make a point of trying to find a couple of these people in these different spheres and, and have a conversation. It's really important that we all engage and discuss and, and advance this technology together as a new medium. So thank you.